Steve and John and Jane, thank you for a wonderful gathering of individuals. I spent uh, over 20 years at Department of Justice with people like Michael Horowitz, prosecuting environmental misdeeds. And I was co-chair of the President's Task Force on Illegal Wildlife Trafficking. I saw every day the importance of people like you committed to the rule of law, advancing our country. And yes, in appropriate times, we paid money for those individuals for precisely the reason uh, uh, that our great delegate from the United Kingdom said that was important. And so I honor each and every one of you, and I, it's a great pleasure to honor a leader in this area, the Vice President of the Caucus uh, on Whistleblowing in the Senate, a leader on environmental issues, uh, somebody who has spent part of his life on a passion of mine and the Commission's on Wildlife Protection. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Senator Ron Wyden. Thank you very much, and um, it is wonderful to be with you, uh, to be the partner uh, with Chairman Grassley. I gather that the chairman hasn't gotten here yet, what with the hearing and, uh, and all the votes. It is frenzy today, um, even by Senate um, standards. But I think all of you understand that the gold standard when it comes to legislative championing of whistleblower rights is Chairman Chuck Grassley. And we ought to recognize that. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I am proud to be his uh, vice uh, chair. And I've got um, some thoughts to offer up uh, this morning. And if I go on too long, I encourage all of you to feel free to run down the hall to a reporter and blow the whistle that I'm given a filibuster. <laughs> and uh, I want to start by saying, I know this is Whistleblower Appreciation Day, and I'll tell you, if I had my way, every single day in America ought to be Whistleblower Appreciation Day. <laughs> and what I want to touch on is that the reality is that the difficulties that whistleblowers face, the challenges of standing up and speaking out, have never been greater. I think we all understand that being a whistleblower has never been an easy road to travel. But my take is there was a period when it wasn't quite so tough. When whistleblowers came forward with the facts, quaint idea, they were recognized as facts. The press would report them. Congress would convene hearings to dig into them. The courts might decide cases based on them. There are a lot of examples of that kind of history. Tobacco companies cover up of cigarette addiction, cost overruns for Air Force transports, rampant problems at the FBI crime lab. You all could give me a history of other cases. Whistle would get blown. The waste of uh, dollars would be exposed. Illegal activity would come to light. Now, it wasn't always fully corrected. But often, if everybody stayed with it, like the people in this room, it was corrected. And it would send a signal, most importantly to others, that when you speak out about wrongdoing, it is worth the challenge. It's worth taking that really hard road. The times have changed for whistleblowers in a lot of ways. Today, our country lives in an environment where facts are often routinely dismissed as fake news. Speaking the truth about almost anything can subject you to assaults, really a pounding, on social media. The truth, as I often see it in the course of articles, 
becomes just another point of view. These days, getting a story trending online and splashing it across the home pages, the biggest news outlets, is basically just the beginning of a quest to reveal the truth, not the conclusion. The currency of whistleblowing has always been facts. When facts are dismissed as fake news, that currency gets devalued. When the chaos of our bitter politics covers up serious, impactful news, it's just a lot harder to expose wrongdoing. Let me give you an example. A dozen years ago, I asked the Interior Inspector General, Earl Devaney, to investigate a serious Interior official, Julie McDonald, for politically intervening in Endangered Species Act determinations. Earl Devaney, who as it turns out, was the last Senate confirmed Inspector General for that department. Let's imagine that, investigated. He substantiated the allegations. Ms. McDonnell lost her job. My view is Earl Devaney was a real hero. Fast forward to today. David Bernhardt is the Secretary of the Interior. As you may know, he took over for Ryan Zinke after Zinke had to resign under you know, a tsunami of ethical charges. He racked up 18 federal investigations in his behavior during 20 months as secretary. You gotta work at it that, to rack up that many ethical federal investigations. As it turns out, there is evidence that Mr. Bernhardt engaged in almost the exact same number. Less than two business days after Bernhardt's confirmation, the Inspector General opened an investigation into whether he used his position as Deputy Secretary to halt the release of a Fish and Wildlife Endangered Species report. Julie McDonald lost her job. David Bernhard got a promotion. No lesson learned. Last week it came to light that the Interior Inspector General is investigating whether other Trump appointees at the Department have violated the Freedom of Information Act whole set of new arrangements for document production. I have serious concerns about the current nominee for solicitor. David Giorgiani may have perjured himself. At least, at the minimum, he was misleading when the Senate Energy Committee questioned him about the Department uh, Freedom of Information Act policies. Freedom of Information Act, as everybody knows, is all about accountability. It's the coin of the realm. Citizens in the press use the Freedom of Information Act to learn about what the government's up to. There shouldn't be a whiff of political influence on FOIA requests. Hiding politically inconvenient facts is what FOIA was meant to stop, not facilitate. Now, I'm going to wrap up by saying I certainly don't think this whole picture is about doom and gloom in this era of fake news. Courageous individuals can still step forward and blow the whistle. It can make a difference. They win false claims uh, cases in court. Congress, the GAO, the Inspector General still act on information. The Whistleblower Caucus came to us as we made mention of uh, the need to protect whistleblowers under the Lacey Act, under the Endangered Species uh, Act. GAO wrote several reports for me on this. So we've got uh, some opportunities uh, to deal with it. In the weeks ahead, the Congress is going to be working on an important whistleblower issue dealing with the Intelligence Authorization Act. There are a number of whistleblower protection provisions that I actually got Democrats and Republicans to include in this year's bill. Appeals for whistleblowers who've been subject to, to reprisals. There are a whole host of important reforms there. So we are managing to uh, get results even in a tough uh, climate. Last comment uh, before I give a really big shout out to my friend who just walked in, uh, Chairman Grassley. Keep blowing the whistle. There are senators and members of Congress to a great extent because Chairman Grassley has made this such a priority. There are members of Congress who will still listen. The cornerstone of democracy is still an informed public and support a free press. Support a free press and make sure you constantly get your message uh, heard. This is not a partisan issue. 